Hello, I am Kim, and I am the host of Single in Christ, which is a space for those who are saved, single, and patiently waiting on the Lord to deliver his promises. And if you are that person or you feel like you could be a guest on this show, please contact us at WYTV7.org. In order to be a guest, we would love to have you. And WYTV7 is a Christian broadcasters network, so we are not doing this for entertainment purposes. We are not doing this for reality purposes. We are doing this because we love the Lord and we want to share our testimony with each and every person and we want to share his glory with everyone. So if you feel like you would want to be a guest on Single in Christ, please contact us at WYTV7.org and please enjoy this broadcast. Hi everyone, it's your girl Kim and welcome back to Single in Christ. I am broadcasting on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network from Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in to Single in Christ, this is a space for those who are safe, single, and patiently waiting on the Lord to deliver his promises. And so, as you know, I have been dating and while I am dating, and I thank you for joining me on this journey of me discovering dating and discovering God's purpose and waiting for his promise for me. But, you know, as I have been dating, I have had the realization that I need to really keep God first. And it's going to have to be very intentional for me to make sure that I am keeping him first, especially while I am dating. So today I want to talk about dating and keeping God first. And so, you know, dating can be a very treacherous thing, especially in today's world. You know, sometimes you meet a guy and you think he's great and he's good, and then he turns out to be crazy, or he turns out to be sex crazed, or he turns out to be just plain weird. And because, you know, we encounter all these things as we're dating, like, I was like, okay, God, what are we as single Christian women supposed to do? Like, how do we combat all this stuff? How do we make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do? And he said, keep me first. And I was like, that seems so simple, right? It seems like, okay, God, keep you first, keep you as the foundation, keep you as the center, make sure I'm focused on you. But what are some really practical tips I can do to make sure that I am keeping him first in everything? So as I was praying to God, he led me, of course, to Matthew 6, 33, which says, but above all, pursue his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, so he's telling me I need to pursue him and his righteousness and all the stuff, all the other stuff will be added to me. I won't have to worry about anything. I won't have to fret about anything. All the stuff will be added unto me as long as I pursue him and his righteousness and keep him first. And so I was like, okay, God, I get it. You want me to pursue you first. You want me to keep you first. You want me to put your righteousness above all things. You want me to continue to keep you first and head of my life. But really, God, as I'm dating and as I am, you know, now that I am dating, my time isn't as plentiful as it used to be. Like, I don't have as much time as I did have because I'm on a date now, like to pray and stuff like that. So Tell me really, God, how can I really keep you first? What are some things I can do? And I want all those things added to me. So here's what I have been doing to make sure I am keeping God first while I'm dating. First thing, of course, pray. It seems simple, right? Um, and as Christian women and as Christian men, we should already be praying. But we have to make sure that our prayers are focused and our prayers are specific, especially for our dating lives. So they should be geared towards, you know, dating, who we're going to date, where we're going to date, making sure that we're safe and making sure that we're being led by the Holy Spirit and even who and, and even in who to decide to date. So pray for that you be have discernment, pray for wisdom. God said that he would give us wisdom and he would give it to us liberally and without reprimand when we ask. So ask often and ask as much as you need to for wisdom from God. Ask for discernment. Pray for discernment. You know, ask all these things, and the prayer doesn't have to be formal. The prayer doesn't have to be complicated and long. It can be really simple. It can be like, okay, God, 
I need your wisdom concerning this thing. You said you would give it to me. You said your wisdom is pure and gentle. I need your wisdom on this thing. Okay, God, I need your discernment. And you said, in all my getting, get wisdom and get knowledge and get understanding. So help me understand, God, what you want me to do. Help me to understand what you need me to do. Just, you know, a simple ask, a simple ask for help using his words, and then just continue on you know, praying, making sure he, um, God reveals any red flags, making sure God reveals to you exactly who this person is that you're dating, making sure that you're making the right decisions when it comes to dating, period, making sure you're not dating for the wrong reasons, just, you know, just making sure that you are complete and whole and secure and confident enough in him to keep going forward. And as you continue to pray, then you'll you'll have to keep him first because you are leaning on him. You're depending on him and you're relying on him to make your path straight to, you know, you're not leaning to your own understanding. And so as you continue to pray, you have to make sure that you know his word and that you're meditating on his word because keeping that stuff in you will help you and guide you, which leads me to the next point, which is to pray. I mean, I'm sorry, which is to meditate and to study on God's word. This scripture, Proverbs 3, um, really always brings me back to making sure I'm meditating on his word. It keeps me grounded. It keeps me making sure that I am not doing anything on my own, that I'm making sure that I'm really keeping him first. And so I encourage you to find a scripture that grounds you like that, um, that grounds you, that makes you, that you can remember easily, that you can call forth in times where you just really need to depend on him. So this is my scripture. It's Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. So the reason I really like that verse is because it helps me to remember to keep leaning on God, that I shouldn't lean on my own wisdom or my own understanding or on my own anything, that in everything that I have to lean on him and rely on him, because my ways or won't leave my path straight. Only in him will, well, only when I rely on him and only when I lean on him are my paths made straight. Only when I rely and I lean on him will I not be wise in my own eyes, but I'll be wise in him. So I have to make sure that I had that scripture down in my heart so that when I am tempted to, or when I am, you know, trying to come up and figure things out on my own, I can, the Holy Spirit can bring back to my memory that scripture and I can say, okay, God, I need to lean on you. I need to get my wisdom from you. I need to get my discernment from you. And the only way I can do that, the only way the Holy Spirit can bring it back to my memory when I need it is because I meditated on it and I studied it. And so that's why meditation and studying God's word is so important because sometimes you're just not going to have access to your Bible. You may, you may have it on your phone. Yeah, you may have it in your car or something, but sometimes you may just be out somewhere and you really need God's word and you really need his, the Holy Spirit's assistance. And the only way you can do that is because you've meditated and studied and got all of that word all his word really inside of your heart. And so that when you need it, you can have it, you can have instant access to it. So when you need it, when you need that wisdom, and when you need to be dis that discernment, you can say, okay, God, you said in Proverbs that a dog, a person goes back to a folly like a dog returns to his vomit. So I don't need to go back to that man, or I don't need to go back to that situation. So you can have that wisdom and discernment, and you can be dependent and reliant upon God's word because you have studied and meditated on it. And because you studied and meditated on it, and it's all in your heart and all in your spirit, not only will you be able to rely on it when you need it, you'll be able to speak it when you need it. You'll be able to speak it when your date might need a word, when someone you meet might need a word, when someone you meet might need encouragement, when your date might need encouragement, and you don't always have to Google or go to the app or do anything just because it's already in you. And I think that's another way to keep God first because as you study and meditate on his word, you'll become more dependent and more reliant on him and really find out and realize how much you really need him and how much his word and his encouragement and his Holy Spirit and his divine power is really getting you 
through the day. It's really getting you through the date. It's really getting you through your work day. It's really getting you through every situation that could come up in life and not just dating. It's just, this is just an overall tip, but really in keeping dating, you really need his word inside of you because you will come across some, you know, you might be on a date, you'd be like, oh God, this is crazy. Give me some words so I can get out of here without this man doing something crazy. Or, you know, you just might need a gentle way to let someone down and you don't want to stir up any anger and you're wrathing them. And God's word and studying on his word can really help you do that. And so, as you're dating and i encourage you to date um because i'm dating and it has been a fun and very interesting experience but while it has been fun and interesting i have to have to make sure that i'm keeping god first so another thing i do besides praying and besides meditating and studying on his word is when i'm actually with someone i pray for them yes i pray for my date and that's another way to make sure god is still being put first like you're honoring God you're making sure he's there you're making sure he's with you and I pray before my date I pray after my date I pray sometimes during the date and I pray for you know the same things I would pray for myself for my day I pray that he be led by the Holy Spirit that God gives him wisdom and discernment that God reveals to him anything that he needs to know concerning me that God reveal his heart you know that God just I don't pray just about him I pray for him. I pray, you know, God's will be done in his life. I pray that God do that thing that is concerning him, you know, like whatever it got needs, he needs met, that God meets those needs. And so, you know, that's another thing if you see that prayer is one of the most important things that we can do in order to keep God first, because that is our line of communication with him. That is how we get to know God and he gets to know us. How else are we going to keep him first if we never talk to him? How else are we going to make sure that he's in everything we do if we don't ask him, if we don't seek him, if we don't make sure that he's okay with what we're doing? And the way we do that is through prayer. And not only praying for ourselves and praying for wisdom, but praying for our dates. And I'm not saying that this date is going to be somebody who is going to be your husband or anything like that. But it's just really good to make sure that you are praying for that person. Because God can reveal some things to you through prayer that you may not have noticed otherwise. Because you're spending time with God and you're spending time talking to God. And also in prayer, I want to make sure that you are taking time to be still and listen to God. Because we always want to hear from God, but we always kind of want that quick thing. We want him to say, we want to say, okay, God, should I do this? And he'd be like, yes, no. But sometimes it's only through his word that we get the um, knowledge, only through some other form. Somebody might say it to us. You know, we might be hearing this specific thing over and over and over again and you have to make sure that you know how God speaks to you and that can only be and you can only find that way out through meditating studying and through prayer you can only know how God speaks to you through prayer some people say they hear an audible voice I haven't really heard that but if you do great for you but you really have to know how you hear God's voice so you can keep him first while dating because then you can know where to go if you hear his if you hear him through studying the word, if you hear him through meditation, if you hear him through prayer, if you hear him while you're watching sermons or, you know, if you're going through things and that's how you hear his voice, you need to make sure you know how to hear his voice and make sure that you're taking the time out to listen for his voice. So while you're praying for your date, also make sure that you're praying with your date. Okay, so I know this might be a little scary, especially if the relationship is new. You might not know how to kind of broach the topic, like, hey, can you pray with me? That's a simple way to do it. Like, you can just ask. And if you're dating someone who's a Christian and who prays regularly, I don't think it should be a problem. I've done this before, and it really hasn't been a problem for me. It hasn't scared anyone away. It has actually, um, you know, made us grow closer has um, made me um, like them a little more because okay I can see now that they're a praying person but you know I haven't always been that direct and so when I was a little afraid to approach the topic I would kind of ask some leading questions to see if they're a praying man to see how you know spiritual they are how what their relationship with God look like so I would ask questions like okay what's your favorite scripture or what's the scripture you've been going to lately to help you through whatever you're going through 
um, um, I've asked, okay, what's the, what have you been praying about lately? And that question really always gets us into, or gets me to the point where I can say, hey, can you pray with me? Because when I ask, what have you been praying about lately? That opens the door for them to say, okay, I, these are the concerns of my life and these are the concerns I'm taking to God. And so that opens the door for me to say, okay, these are the concerns in my life and this is what I'm taking to God. And so now that we both know what we're trying to take to God, we can take those things to God together. And so now that we're praying together, so I can say, hey, pray with me about this thing. Or he can say, hey, can you pray with me about this thing? Because I know this is concerning you. I know this is concerning me. And while we have these common concerns, let's take this to God together. And so that definitely keeps God first because when you're praying together, when you're praying with your date, there's no room for anything else to get in there, especially if you always making sure like, okay, we're having this kind of argument or we're doing this kind of thing. Let's make sure that God is okay with us doing this. And so you take it together to God and you together with God and you pray. And that's how you really keep God first while dating, just prayer, study, and meditation and just talking, communicating with your date, with your partner, with your significant other, and just saying, this thing is really important to me. I want to make sure that I am keeping God first while I'm dating, because I believe that he is the foundation of everything. And if this continues on into anything more serious or marriage or anything like that, I want to make sure that we are doing it in the right way and in God's way. And the only way we can do that is to ask him and make sure he's we're seeking him and make sure we're doing it the way he really wants us to do. So I haven't really gotten to a serious relationship point yet, but I am confident that when I do that, I will be praying for and with and making sure that I am prayerful in everything and making sure that I am studying and meditating on his word. Because as Christian women and as Christians, period, that's what we should already be doing, right? We should already be praying. We should already be studying and meditating on his word. We should already be praying for people. We should already be praying with certain people. And that's why I also say that a circle around you, uh, um, you know, a community of people of like-minded believers around you is important because those same skills that you develop in that circle that you exhibit in that circle and of like-minded believers is those same skills sometimes and for the most part are the same skills that you will transfer on into your dating world so if you aren't praying now if you aren't meditating now if you aren't keeping god first now how are you going to do it when you're dating it's just going to be even more difficult because now your time is more divided now you are, have the opportunity for more distractions and more temptations and it's going to be easier for you to fall because you didn't build it up as a single person, as a person who wasn't dating. So if you aren't doing that thing now, there's no time like the present. Go ahead and start praying. Start being more prayerful. And if you need, if you don't know how to pray, just say, God, ask God. It's just a simple thing. Just talk. Just tell God what's concerning you and go read his word. If you don't know where to start, say, if you're feeling lonely or depressed or whatever, Google scriptures about depression, Google scriptures about loneliness, and just start there. And if you can't seem to find the time to pray, just if you take a shower every day, take that time in the shower to pray because there's no formal way to pray. You don't have to be on your knees with your eyes closed and your hands lifted. You can just talk to God. You can talk to God on your commute to work. You can talk to God, you know, while you're on your lunch break on that five minutes where you don't have anything to do at work. Just start small and continue to do it throughout the day. And as you continue to talk to God in the shower, while you're driving, while you're, you know, doing whatever, just continue. Then you, I feel like you'll find more times throughout the day because I felt really good talking to God right there. So let me carve out this five minutes where I'm not doing anything where I can just focus on talking to him. Okay, let me carve out this other five minutes where I'm not doing anything, where I can just sit and meditate and study on his word. And as you continue to build that relationship with God, it'll be easier to keep him first while dating because you have to make sure that he is the foundation of everything in your life and it'll be easier for you to transition into dating while keeping god first and keeping god first if you're already doing it while you're not dating and while you're in your single season so i am so excited 
to continue my journey with you, to continue to tell you my adventures and my misadventures of dating. And as always, I am not telling you anything that I am not doing or that I have not done. And these things have worked out for me. So if these things are working out for you, or if you have any more tips or any things you would like you would feel like you want to share about how to keep God first while dating, please share them. Please like, please comment, please share this out to anyone you feel may be helped by this. And as always, you can contact me. You can reach me on Facebook or Instagram at single in Christ, or you can go to single in Christ.org and reach out to me that way. And I just thank you all for joining me on this journey and I will see you next time. And remember to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything you do. All right, see you later. Bye.